Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. The art of the fast field goal is tricky. It's one of those things that is incredibly hard to pull off. Under the fast field goal, you have to get your entire offense off the field and replace them with a special teams unit, all while the clock is running and you have no time to go through your usual routine as a kicker. It's tough, and it's a situation that doesn't come up too much. But when it works, it is a thing of beauty. When it works, it's a model of great coaching and situational awareness. But when it doesn't, Peterson is set. Where's the kicker? Okay, before I go any further, we have to prepare ourselves for what's about to happen. Because I've watched a lot of football in my life across all eras. And I can safely say that what's about to happen next is one of the funniest things I've ever seen in a game. Here's the context behind the play. Because there's a lot to take in here. It's September 19th, 1999. And the Philadelphia Eagles are taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at Veterans Stadium. This is a big game for both teams because both teams lost their season opener. And the last thing you want to do is start 0-2. For the Eagles, they lost 25-24 to the Arizona Cardinals after blowing a nine-point lead with seven minutes left and allowing the Cardinals to the game-winning field goal on the final play of the game. As for the Buccaneers, despite holding the Giants to four first downs and 107 yards of total offense, they lost 17-13 because Trent Dilfer was not good. I know, what a shocker. There was actually some drama in the locker room after that game, which you can learn more about in the upper right corner. A loss to Philadelphia here could have sent the Bucks on a tailspin. Fortunately for them, things were looking pretty good at the start. After an opening drive lasting close to seven minutes, Trent Zilfer found Bert Emanuel for a 19-yard touchdown. Tampa Bay's defense was still as good as ever, as after Philly scored on an opening drive field goal, they punted three times and threw an interception on the other one. With just under two minutes left, the Bucks were leading 13 to five, and the Eagles had the ball near midfield, looking to get some points on the board before halftime. A Deuce Staley run for eight yards put Philadelphia into Buccaneer territory. The Eagles called a timeout after the next play. And then Doug Peterson hit Deuce Staley for a 13 yard gain to put the Eagles in field goal range, putting them on the 31 yard line with 53 seconds left. Andy Reid calls the team's last timeout. Time shouldn't be an issue here with 31 yards to go and 53 seconds left. It might be pushing your luck a bit to get a touchdown, but at the very least, getting a field goal should not be a concern. Eventually, the Eagles get another first down and have the ball at the 11-yard line. There's only 25 seconds left, so on first down with the clock running, Doug Peterson spikes the ball. Second down, and Peterson throws incomplete out of the end zone. Third down, there's 19 seconds left. You've got to call a play in the end zone, or at the very least, call a play to get the first down so that you can spike it and get your field goal unit out. And if for some reason, disaster struck and you got sacked or tackled in the field of play without a first down, you better have your special teams unit ready to line up for a quick field goal. What's about to happen next is one of the funniest things you're ever going to see at the NFL level. Roll the tape. Being open when the quarterback set the throw. Play fake, Peterson throwing to Turner, he's hit, knocked down at the 10-yard line. Now they've got to get the field goal kicking unit out. Nine seconds, eight. Can they get it off? Peterson is set. Where's the kicker? Johnson's coming out. They may not get this off. One second, they got it down. The kick is up, and it is no good. No good. What a blunder by the Eagles. Oh, Lord Johnson yeah. never got out on the field and in the time. They're letting them know about it. The kicker did not know that they couldn't kill the clock. They thought they had one play left to kill the ball. They couldn't do it. Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Before I break this play down, this whole series is about taking an in-depth look at decisions made during games that were clearly awful from the start. This isn't something that looked bad in hindsight. Rather, this is something that looked awful almost immediately. These are moves where your gut instinct tells you right away that there is no way this can possibly work. And sure enough, your gut instinct was smarter than that of an NFL head coach. And for this one, we're taking a look at the mind of Andy Reid. This is a tough one, because normally on this segment, we cover bad coaches. Gus Bradley, Dave Campo, Abe Gibran, you get the idea. Andy Reid is arguably the best coach ever to be featured on this segment. The only other one into the discussion is Bud Grant. You can check that episode out in the upper right corner. 
But if there's one criticism that Reed has had over his coaching career, it's his in-game clock management. His skills there at times have been less than ideal to say the least. There was the touchdown drive he had down by two scores against the Patriots in the postseason that took an eternity. There was the other touchdown drive he had down by two scores against the Patriots in the postseason that took an eternity. This moment against the Bucks, though, might be the worst moment of his coaching career, because there is a lot to take in here. So with that being said, let's take a look at why calling that play on third down, and then not having your kicker on the field on fourth down, it's a bad idea. I'm going to preface this by saying that not everything here is Andy Reid's fault. Again, there is a lot going on, and I can blame the players and all the coaches for what happened here. And I'm not going to do a risk and reward analysis like I normally do on these videos, because here, it's blatantly obvious. The first part of this equation is the third down pass. My question is simple. What the heck is this play? First off, this is a play action pass on third and 10. The only time anyone is ever running the ball on third and 10 is if it's the end of the game, they want to kill the clock, or they don't trust their quarterback one bit and they're on the fringe of field goal range, so they just want to get some yards and walk away with three points. In every other situation, any coach with a brain is calling a pass play on third and 10 for very obvious reasons. You're going up against arguably the best defense in football. It's a defense that held the Giants to four first downs the week before and has held your offense completely in check. You really think they're going to bite on a play action pass on third and 10 when you have no timeouts? Everyone in the stadium knows you're throwing a pass here, and yet you're trying to sell the run. That's the equivalent of Aaron Judge squaring up to bunt with the bases empty and two strikes in the count. Nobody's biting. Nobody's dumb enough to fall for that. So why are you even trying to attempt it? Secondly, why are you sending your fullback out on this route? There's no way he can get the first down, and there's no way he can get to the sideline to stop the clock. By doing this, along with the play action, you're openly inviting pressure. You're basically telling Doug Peterson he's got to get rid of this ball as quickly as possible, because the Bucks are going to get to him with ease. Yes, Peterson should not have thrown this pass, and should have thrown it at Kevin Turner's feet. But why is that option even there? Part of being a head coach is knowing the strengths of your players and knowing whether or not you can trust them to make the right decision. If you have a quarterback like Peyton Manning or Patrick Mahomes, they know better than to do this. But Doug Peterson, an undrafted guy in his second career start, the same guy that earlier in the game threw this pass, I don't even know what he was looking at here. Reed had to have known that him throwing this pass was an option. So why even give it to him? Even though he shouldn't have thrown this, based on his tendencies, it was highly likely that he was going to throw this pass. I looked at every completion that Peterson had on the game up until that point and analyzed how many yards it traveled beyond the line of scrimmage. Of his 12 completions, only one throw was greater than eight yards beyond the line. He needed to get 10 here. If you average them all out, his average distance beyond the line was 3.7 yards. That's it. There were multiple moments during the game where he threw it short of the sticks on third down with no opportunity for yards per catch after. This is what Peterson does. These are his tendencies. He checks down. Why are you giving him a check down option if you can't afford to have a check down here in the field of play? It's almost like leaving a crayon in the room with a kid. If the kid is 10 years old and they draw on the wall, then yeah, that's entirely their fault because they know better. But if the kid is two and they draw with a crayon on the wall, it's kind of your fault because based off of previous history, what else did you expect him to do? The same logic applies here, and it's how we even got into this fast field goal mess to begin with. The whole play design was just a mess, and on its own, this is really, really bad. But then, we get to the good stuff. You didn't click on this video because you wanted to see a mess of a third down play. You clicked on this video because you wanted to see, well... Peterson is set. Where's the kicker? Exactly. Look, I'm not blaming Andy Reid entirely for this one here, for a few reasons. Number one, I've never seen this happen before. I've seen a situation where the putter forgot to take the field in a game between the Buccaneers and the Bengals in 1980. I made a video about a different thing that happened in that game, which you can check out in the upper right corner. And I'll definitely make a future video about that incident down the line. But I've never seen it happen with the kicker. Never before in my life. And number two, this isn't some inexperienced guy who had no idea what the rules of the game were. The kicker here is 39-year-old Norm Johnson. He's been in the league since 1982, and even played in Super Bowl 30 with the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
He's a two-time Pro Bowler and a really solid kicker. Bottom line, he's got to know better on this one. Johnson said so afterwards in a post-game press conference. Reed said so in the post-game press conference. And Fox even got a chance to interview Reed prior to the start of the second half, where he discussed this play. Take a listen. Somehow he, uh, he disappeared on us. Uh, I'm not sure exactly miscommunication or human error. I'm not sure, but he needs to be there and he needs to be in the game. It was loud and clear what was going on. However, even though I'm not putting much of the blame on Reed himself, I do have to place blame on the rest of the team and the coaching staff. There are a seemingly infinite number of guys on the sideline. Every other special teams player knew the situation and was ready to go out there. You're telling me that in the time between the second down and the third down play, especially since the clock was stopped, not one player or coach failed to notice the kicker on the sideline. Not a single person noticed the kicker sitting on the bench or warming up when he shouldn't be. Who's even the special teams coach to begin with? Oh, that's awkward. Either way, there's a reason why the Eagles were bad in the late 90s, and it's the little things like this. This is just basic quality control. You have a get-back coach whose only job is to keep players from leaving the sideline and entering the field, and you can't have one of the 10,000 guys on your sideline alert to the fact that the kicker isn't ready? These 19 seconds were nothing short of an organizational failure across the board. Andy Reid's coaching career would obviously get way better after this, but in terms of making a good first impression, for this to happen in his second ever game, yeah, it's not the best. So what do we learn from all this? Don't call a play action pass on third and long when you have no timeouts and not a single soul is going to bite on it. When the last thing you need is a stupid play, don't put your quarterback in a position to do something stupid, especially if that stupid thing is your quarterback's greatest tendency. Clock management is important. Quality control is important. And this should go without saying, but if you're kicking a field goal, make sure you have a kicker on the field. Because when all of these elements are in play, you can't exactly be surprised when this play backfires. Talk about a dumb decision. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at Jaguar9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping on the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. See so how you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.